All right. Good morning to everybody. I just got off of work and I was watching Brother Bill's Hangout last night and I was just really thinking about it afterwards and I just I I realized how serious of an issue this is and that there is actually some really good <clears throat> spiritual meat in Jeremiah 29 for the believer and it's not being digested but I, I, I apologize to a lot of people because I didn't I didn't see this before I didn't realize how serious this was and it's 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 a really big issue and um, I think <clears throat> that uh, we can learn from the scriptures uh, the the truth of the matter and basically um, what was said that made me really think about it was a statement a lot of soul winners leave this out and it really made me think about i mean what well, well of course i would leave it out of course i would leave jeremiah 29 out of my gospel presentation because when i go to someone's house or if i see someone and i preach them the gospel i'm trying to tell them how to go to heaven i'm just trying to tell them how to go to heaven and <clears throat> um essentially We'll just read Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, and I'll just I'll just go right into it because I just I got I just got off work, and um, I need to be going to bed anyways, so uh, I just need to get right into it. But we're gonna start in Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, and we're gonna actually cover a lot of scriptures, and uh, we're gonna use. The golden rule of using the New Testament to interpret the old. And uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start here in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Je uh, Jeconiah, the king and the queen of the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand, <clears throat> by the hand of uh, Elasa, the son of, I hate how they always put spaces and apostrophes and all these names, they always mess me up. By the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, <laughs> and uh, and Gamaria, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem, unto Babylon. So this is a letter that Jeremiah is, is the prophet is writing from the mouth of God to the elders, the prophets, the priests, and everyone who is carried away captive, who he caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So are we talking about God's people or are we talking about lost people? I, it just seems so clear to me that we're, we're, we're talking about God's people and the reason that God would even take them into captivity. We learn in the book of Hebrews is because they are children and not bastards. 
which is what Hebrews 12 says, that if you're not being chastened by God, then are ye bastards and not sons? That's what that's what the book says. That's what the New Testament says. And we see that God never changes. He's always the same. He's his children, his saved children were disobeying him. And he's he sent them away into captivity. Why? Because whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. That's that's what the Bible teaches. So he says in verse five, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may uh, be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken uh, to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you saith the Lord and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from the places whither I have driven you saith the Lord and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive because ye have said the Lord hath raised us up prophets in Babylon know that <clears throat> thus saith the Lord of the king that sitteth upon the throne, David, of all the people that dwelleth in the city, and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. So the saved people that aren't with you in captivity, that aren't being chastened. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword and uh, the famine and the pest pestilence, and I will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten <clears throat> they are so evil and i will persecute them with the sword with the famine and with the pestilence and i will deliver them to be removed <clears throat> to all the kingdoms of the earth to be cursed to be a curse and to be as and, and an astonishment and an hissing and a reproach among all the nations whither i have driven them because they have not hearkened to my words, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early <clears throat> and sending them, but ye would not hear, saith the Lord. Hear ye there, therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of captivity, whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab, the son <clears throat> of Kaliah, and of Zedekiah, the son of uh, Messiah, <clears throat> which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the land of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And I really don't think we need to read the rest of, of the chapter. What God's telling them is, hey, You've hearkened to my rebuke. So he's talking about seven, 70 years. Um, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work, <clears throat> my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. So his children they go and they seek him and they, and Hey, we messed up. 
<clears throat> yeah, we get it. We messed up and we and they go and seek him and they call upon him. They're going to find him. That's that's what he's telling. That's a promise from God. <clears throat> and we actually see this in First Chronicles. Chapter 28, we have David um, talking to his son Solomon, who we know was, was a saved believer. <clears throat> and in verse 9, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So <clears throat> our, 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 we're, we're seeing God promising a specific saved person through the prophet David. That if he seeks him, he will be found of him. But guess what? Solomon, he doesn't listen to that for, for a long time. <clears throat> and uh, that'd be a story for a different day. But, <clears throat> all right. So I want to talk a little bit about the lost man and the state of the lost man and what the bible says about the lost man and <clears throat> what kind of goes through you know just how just how the lost man is what the bible says about the lost man and uh <clears throat> in romans chapter 8 <clears throat> there we go in verse 7, <clears throat> it says, well, we'll start in verse 6. For to, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And... In 1 Corinthians 2.14, <clears throat> For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So it says that the natural man, the lost man, cannot receive the things of God. He cannot understand the things of God. Now, in 1 Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 8, and then I'm going to go to Romans chapter 9, we see that um, <clears throat> that it's not wise to send a lost man to the Bible to, to try and understand it on his own. <clears throat> um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8 says, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And back in Romans chapter 9, <clears throat> he says something really similar. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. 
Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So whosoever believeth is not going to be offended by God and ashamed. And who who doesn't believe and who has other ways that they're trying to learn about God other than just trusting him to take him to heaven when they die, they're they're going to stumble at the stumbling stones. It's not only people who are trying to save themselves by their works. It's <clears throat> there's all kinds of different situations that if a person, if the person really wants to believe something, then God will let them believe that. <clears throat> but <clears throat> so what is the power of God unto salvation when we go, when we, when we go soul winning. <clears throat> and I, I, I mean, the verse that pops right into my head is that for, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that seeketh to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, <clears throat> We, we're we're going to start to see a, cons a consistent pattern here because the, it just, it seems so clear. It just seems so clear to me. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> talk about the, the gospel, the prescribed method, what we're supposed to do, what we're called to do, what the new Testament tells us to do, what, what, what this is all about. And then I'm going to tie it all together and I'm going to show you what the meat is in Jeremiah that we can learn from. So <clears throat> to get back to where I was <clears throat> in Romans chapter three. <clears throat> all right. Romans chapter three. Verse 10, this is uh, really every, every, every lost man um, is, all right, well, <clears throat> the, the gospel always starts with we're, we're all sinners, okay? So every, every, everyone is a sinner, <clears throat> all right? <clears throat> and we the bible teaches that i mean isaiah says all we like sheep have gone astray so this is the, the point that i'm trying to make here is that when it comes to lost people the bible teaches that there's nobody who seeks after god okay <clears throat> and romans 3 says in verse 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So <clears throat> there's none that seeketh after God. No lost people seek after God. That's not, there's none that, and there's none that understandeth more importantly. So we're not supposed to send them to a book that they don't understand to try and to try and understand it. Now, I do believe that a lost person can come to the knowledge of their lost state and trust Christ as their savior and and and, and under and under, understand the gospel with you know without necessarily a certain, well, you have to do this and you have to say this and whatever, you know, I did, I, I didn't get saved by someone coming to, to soul win at, at, you know, at, at my door. So 
there the God can reach people in in different ways. But as a, as a, as a general rule, if we're just going to go by what the Bible says when we're going to when we're going to try to win people to Christ, this is my I'm going to assume that there's none that understandeth and that there's none that seeketh after God because that's 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 what the verse says. <clears throat> and <clears throat> next one would be Romans or first Corinthians. I'm sorry. First Corinthians one. There it is. <clears throat> Corinthians 121 says for after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God it pleased God by the foolishness of seeking him in his word of humbly humbling yourself and seeking after God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So that's God's prescribed method for how we are supposed to win people to Christ. <clears throat> and in Romans 10, it puts all this together. It says, starting in verse 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, when it's saying that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it says that in the old Testament several times, it's not saying that because you prayed, you were saved. The Bible speaks in. When you read the Bible and it's the narrator or because it, it is true that there are there's people that tell lies in the Bible. It's true that they lied, but what they said wasn't true. So there are some statements in the Bible where it's somebody lying and it's not a true statement. It's true that they said it, but the statement isn't true. But anytime that it's the narrator, which is the Holy Spirit, or a prophet speaking for God, it is, if it's God saying that this person calls upon the name of the Lord, he's saying they call upon me. They're not calling upon a false God. So saying that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, they're, they're, it's identifying who they call upon, that they really believe in the right God. So it's not saying that they prayed a prayer and they were and they were saved because they prayed. No, it's just identifying who they're praying to. It's saying they call upon the name of the Lord. So when it says Abraham called upon the name of the Lord, it's because he believed in the Lord. Uh, and we're going to see that in Romans chapter 10. He says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they've not believed? So you have to believe on the Lord before you can call on him and you're saved when, when you believe Jesus said, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So if you have everlasting life, then it's the Lord you're calling upon. When you pray, you have the right, you have the right God. <clears throat> and it says, and how shall they believe in him um, of whom they have not sought? in whom they have not heard. How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. All right? They've not all obeyed. Now, what is obeying the gospel? For, as, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? You believe what the preacher said. And what the preacher say? 
He said, Jesus said, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He said that if you believe that, he will give you everlasting life. That's the promise that I'm trying to get somebody. Um, and the Bible tells us to compel them. And it says, some have compassion and some say with fear. Some need to say, hey, you're going to hell and you need to get saved. Some need compassion. And the Holy Spirit helps you to discern that. But I, I just realized how serious it is to try and get someone to trust something else. You're trying to get, that's a different, it's a different message. It's another, it's another gospel when you try and get someone to trust something else, especially something that's promised to a saved believer. That's not a promise to the lost man. The lost man is not guaranteed to you just send him on his own and he reads the Bible and he's going to get saved. It doesn't work like that. The Bible tells you to preach them the gospel. It tells you what to preach them. And it shows you in the New Testament. There's not one time in the New Testament where I find someone telling them to humbly seek after God and blah, 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 blah. They preach them the gospel and they compel them to believe. And thousands of people got saved. They heard and they believed. They heard that day and they believed. 3,000 people. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now the truth is to use the New Testament to in interpret the old. Now <clears throat> I'm going to look at a verse in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 1 Now this this is important. The New Testament is the New Testament quotes quotes this verse in the passage that I was just reading in Romans chapter 10, Paul quotes this verse. And this is a prophecy about about today about the new testament times and god says i am sought of them that asked not for me i am found of them that sought me not i said behold me behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name i have spread out my hands all the day unto the rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts, a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the, in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. <clears throat> Does this sound like a description that God's saying, I'm going to come after those that are humbly seeking me? Those that humbly seek me uh, are, are, are going to definitely get saved and they're safe until they do. <clears throat> Let's look in Romans chapter 10, where he quotes this verse in verse 20. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me, but to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto the disobedient and gang-saying people. So the Old Testament prophesies and the New Testament confirms that God is going to be found of those who don't seek after him, who don't have any any interest of that and 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 how is this well in the same passage earlier in romans chapter 10 you preach him the gospel and how shall they call upon him and who they not believe and how they shall believe in him and who they not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach it except they be sent that's the prescribed method and the the faith precedes seeking 
And we're going to see that here. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So <clears throat> without faith, it is impossible to please him. And he rewards them who diligently seek him. So is a reward something that you earn or is a reward a gift? Because salvation is a free gift that you, you believe it and you're saved. But a reward consistently in the Bible is talking about service. It's talking about something that we earn. It's talking about something that we do in order to get something from God. So what does a person get according to the New Testament if they seek God? They get a reward because God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Because though those who are lost can't seek him. The carnal mind is at enmity with God. That's just what that's what the Bible says. And so <clears throat> I think that it's it's a very grievous error. I mean, a, a reward is not a gift. The Bible says in hearing, they believed. You hear and you and, and you and you believed. <clears throat> in Romans the, the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So <clears throat> I, I, I just, I, I don't, un, I don't understand where, where it's, I just realized how serious it is. If, if some, and I, and I just need to warn people, do not take this up. Do not start doing this where I'm not going to get someone to make a decision. I'm not going to get them to trust Jesus. I'm going to get them to trust a promise that God promised to his people, his a specific people that <clears throat> were led captive into Babylon. And if they just believe that, then they're, they're going to get saved down the road and I'm not going to have anything to do with it. That is, that is the wicked seed of Calvinism. Calvinism is infamous for that. Calvinism is infamous for or for dismotivating people to go preach the gospel because, well, they're just going to get saved anyways. They're just going to get saved or they're just going to be lost anyways, whether I go or not. And the truth is, is that the reason that people don't hear a message isn't because God didn't send somebody. It's because they didn't go. And that's what the that's what the Bible says. The Bible teaches to go forth into all the world and preach Jeremiah chapter 29 to preach the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. Why would I preach them anything else? That's another message. That's not my message. That's a, that's another message. And I take, I take, I take issue with that. I take a stand against preaching another message at someone's door. Because their eternity is at stake. You could send somebody to hell by getting them to trust something in the Bible that the Bible says that they can't even understand. And I just, I realized how foolish that is. I realized how serious it is and that it's, that it's, it's not a light issue that it's not, it's not, we can just, we can just, <clears throat> we can, we can agree to disagree. And this is a non-essential. This is the essential. This is telling someone that they have to first, you got to do this, and then 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 you got to read this, and who knows what you got to read. You just, just start reading, and then eventually God will save you, buddy. That's a wicked message. That's an evil message. That is not 
that is that is not the gospel. And I and I hope, I pray God that that this that this rebuke is received because this rebuke is in love. It's done with an extremely heavy heart. And I cannot even believe that I didn't that I didn't see how serious this was and see how wicked it is. And it it is evil. It's evil. It's an evil message. You don't go to someone's house. You don't go. You don't do that. You were told to preach the gospel, which is the power of God into salvation. And what is the gospel? The gospel is that we're all sinners. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. And if you're a human being, you're a sinner. And that's the truth. And the penalty for our sin is, is death in hell. The Bible says that, that <clears throat> we have to go to hell to pay for our sins. So God because he loves us, he doesn't want that. The Bible says that God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he, the, all the sins that all of human history, that every human who has ever lived and ever will live in the future, all of the sin 2000 years ago was paid for that you know the <laughs> god god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and <clears throat> you know we're all sinners we deserve hell and hell is the punishment for our sin god loves us he doesn't want us to go to hell so he came down from heaven 2000 years ago to be born as a man, Jesus Christ. He went to the cross, suffered a brutal, bloody death for your sins. He died. He was put in a grave. Three days later, he came back from the dead. And he said, whosoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. You will not perish. You'll have everlasting life. And everlasting is everlasting. The Bible says in hope of eternal life that God who cannot lie promised before the world began. And the Bible says that you can know you have eternal life. In 1 John 5, 13, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And this life is in his Son. So you can know whether you're going to heaven. Why? Because it's free. It's a free gift. You didn't earn it. There's nothing that you could do to earn it. And there's nothing you could do to lose it. Once you're a child of God, you're a, you're a child of God for all eternity. And it's, it's just the most simple message. It's supposed to be so simple that you can tell it to a child and they understand it. So simple that I can tell it to somebody else. And that person from what I said, can go tell somebody else and tell somebody else and tell somebody else and tell somebody else. That's the way it was designed. It was designed to be easy. It was designed for the simple to understand it for little children. And, and <clears throat> may it, it, it's making it, it's making it too complicated. You have to have, you have to be a certain intellectual and you I mean, uh, it's, it's, I just, I can't even believe it. I can't believe that I didn't, I didn't, see that sooner how <clears throat> and i apologize to anybody because i've been affiliated with with people who believe that and and still was <clears throat> but i can't I, I i can't i can't bear i can't bear with it i can't it's I, that is the essential that's that's the gospel and you're taking the gospel out of soul winning that's that's evil uh, <clears throat> that's just i don't get it i don't understand why 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 they don't see it why they don't see how serious that is and and how i, I don't i don't see it but 
the only thing that I can do is I can try to do something about it by trying to warn people that that that's a serious error and do not be believing that and do not be preaching that to people because you just send somebody off on their own and their own devices to go understand the Bible by themselves as a lost person. You might as well condemn that person to hell for all you know. That's, <clears throat> I mean, I get asked all the time, like, well, how do you know that that person got saved? They, <clears throat> why should I not believe them? They didn't do anything more or less than I did to get saved. So who am I, <clears throat> you know, well, they might not have really believed. Then let that be on their head. That's not my problem. I'm not the one who lied. So <clears throat> that, and I'm not supposed to worry about that. I'm supposed to preach the gospel. I'm not supposed to, to get people to go on this Easter egg hunt or this wild goose chase through the Bible to just discern on their own without understanding things that the Bible says that they aren't able to understand. It's foolish. It's vain. It's foolish. It's, it's not something that's taught anywhere in the Bible. There's not one New Testament example of anyone ever doing that. They always preached them Christ crucified. Even when that was Old Testament, they, the, the Ethiopian eunuch, he had, he had a book from Isaiah. And it says that Philip preached to him, Jeremiah chapter 29, Jesus. It says he preached him Jesus from the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> so I need to calm down and I need to go to bed. And, you know, I said everything that <clears throat> I need to say. And I think that I got the message across. I think the scripture is absolutely clear that the book of Jeremiah is great spiritual meat for a believer. It's a great prodigal son type story where, where, you know, Hey, look, you're in disobedience to God. You're being chastened, but you seek me and you'll find me. I'll take you back with open arms. It's no problem. You can come and you can serve me still. And, and I can still use you. I can take whatever is broken and I can fix it. I can make it better. I can, I can, I can bless you or I can curse you. My children that are disobedient, this is what's going to happen. My children that are obedient and you, and you change your mind and you come to yourself and you realize, Hey, I don't want to be doing this. I want to serve God. Then guess what? God's going to, you're going to be found. He's going to be, he's going to be found of you. <laughs> You seek him, he's going to be found. He's going to hearken to your voice when you when you when you come to him. When you realize that's what the whole that's what the whole book of, or the whole chapter of Jeremiah twenty nine is about. It's about God's people disobeying, going into captivity, getting right with God, him hearkening their voice, and receiving them openly as as his children, which they always were even when they were being disobedient. So I don't I don't I don't I don't really see any debate. I think this that this that this should just be received. Ideally this should be received. Okay, well, yeah. All right. This that's not what the promise is about. That's the the book of Jeremiah is is talking to save people and not lost people. I'll stop doing that. That's that should be the response, and I I, I won't accept any other re, any other response. Any 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 other response is is that's another that's another message. That's what the same people call hidden works. You got to go on a wild goose chase to be saved, and I don't believe that. I believe that that's a lie. I believe that's a way to complicate the gospel. I believe that that's a stumbling stone to the gospel. That's a stumbling stone to people getting saved. And, and it's, it's not, it's not good. It's very bad. And that, you know, I, I, I believe these people are brothers, but I believe they're in very serious error, like falling away error, like another gospel error. And I, 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 I apologize to anyone 
for being for being affiliative that I only just realized it last night and I'm <laughs> I'm sorry I apologize and uh, I needed it was very needful that I make this video but I need to uh, be getting to bed here pretty soon and it looks like I always get in trouble for getting getting not looking at the chat <clears throat> oh man yeah I wasn't paying attention to the chat so oh well <clears throat> but God bless everybody and take it easy and uh, I'll see y'all later